Hello everybody, welcome back to another video on Decades. Today we're in Clitheroe, a town situated in Lancashire's Ribble Valley. But why are we here? Now I've heard this place has a lovely brewery, however that is not the reason. The reason is arguably its most noticeable landmark. For this quiet town, which is my favourite type of town, sitting under the shadow of Pendle Hill, is home to one of the smallest surviving stone-built castle keeps in all of England. Join me today as we begin to explore the history of Clitheroe Castle. The story of Clitheroe Castle arguably began after the Norman conquest of England in the 11th century, though it is believed to be possible that a wooden fortress stood on the lands prior to this, though this is disputed. The site of the castle sits nearby to a Roman road, suggesting that the valley of the River Ribble had been something of a popular transport route. Today, Clitheroe Castle sits atop a 128 feet tall limestone outcrop. This natural landform provides a tactical advantage. You could therefore argue that the Romans or somebody would naturally take advantage of this to oversee the nearby trade routes. But let's move on. Clitheroe Castle is classified as an enclosure castle, but effectively has the layout of a Mutton Bailey castle due to sitting atop a natural limestone outcrop that it utilises as its mot. It's known to be comprised of a keep, a gatehouse and a curtain wall, part of which has survived into modern times. Charters and other historical documents also reference the presence of a chapel and a great hall, that likely stood where the education centre now is. It also had a jail for the purpose of imprisoning people of importance. In fact, some believe King Henry VI himself may have been held here briefly after he was captured outside of Clitheroe during the Wars of the Roses in 1465. Before we dive into mindless trivia though, let's establish some chronology. The construction of Clitheroe Castle dates to the 12th century. Some believe a reference in the Doomsday Book can be attributed to it which would put its construction as early as 1086 under Roger the Poitivon, though many believe that this reference is to Lancaster Castle and not Clitheroe. However, it's believed a castle stood at Clitheroe from around 1102 with charters in the decades that followed mentioning the castle's chapel. The construction of the keep that stands most prominently today is credited to Robert de Lacy, 5th Baron of Pontefract, who died in 1193. The lands had initially been granted to his grandfather, also called Robert de Lacy, the best part of a century prior. But to what extent a castle was present here prior to his grandson is certainly a debatable topic. An example of this comes in the form of the Battle of Clitheroe, which was fought in the summer of 1138, in which the Scottish forces under the leadership of William Fitz Duncan were victorious against the English. However, in any known accounts of this conflict, no castle is ever mentioned. On the one hand, it seems like an important detail to miss out, and on the other you could argue that Clitheroe clearly had strategic importance by this time. Anyway, upon the death of Robert de Lacy, 5th Baron of Pontefract, in 1193, the lands would be passed on to his cousin, Albreda de Lacy, due to Robert passing away childless. The lands would find their way into the possession of her grandson, Roger Fitz John, the Constable of Chester, who would change his surname to de Lacy due to an agreement he had made with his late grandmother. However, the castle itself would be in the possession of King Richard I, also known as Richard the Lionheart, and would be garrisoned in the 1190s due to the rebellion of Richard's brother, John. At some point after, it appears the property would be returned to the de Lacy family. For the century that followed, not an awful lot is known about Clitheroe Castle, however it would undergo repairs in the early 1300s. A new gate would be constructed where the drive meets the castle walls, whilst still under the ownership of the de Lacy family, who had by this point become the Earls of Lincoln. However, 
In 1311, Henry de Lacy, the third Earl of Lincoln, would pass away, and ownership of all his properties would pass to Thomas, second Earl of Lancaster husband to his daughter. During Bannister's Rebellion in 1315, Clitheroe Castle was raided for weapons and other military supplies along with many other castles. Why? Because a group of knights dissatisfied with the Earl of Lancaster, led by Sir Adam Bannister, decided to turn on the Earl in what they saw as an act of vengeance. They would steal crops, goods, weapons, anything they could get their hands on, and then turn those resources to raid heavier targets such as castles, rooting out and terrorising the Earl's supporters. Upon the Earl of Lancaster's death in 1322, his lands would fall to his brother Henry, officially becoming part of the Duchy of Lancaster. Around a century later in 1425, a new chamber would be constructed alongside additional repairs, and during the Wars of the Roses, King Edward IV would order repairs worth £200, which would be roughly £180,000 in today's money. However, it would seem to fall into disrepair again, becoming ruinous by the turn of the 17th century, with a survey in 1602 warning that the buildings were likely to collapse and in the few short years that followed, some had. During the English Civil War in 1644, Prince Rupert of the Rhine, Duke of Cumberland, would leave a garrison at Clitheroe Castle whilst en route to aid York, which had been besieged by parliamentarian forces. Whilst functioning as a garrison, the castle would be repaired, albeit only to the point where it was marginally inhabitable and stocked with resources. However, it would soon become abandoned again following the Royalist defeat at the Battle of Marston Moor. And this is probably the perfect place to talk about Clitheroe Castle's legendary hole. Yeah, the arrow slits on the northwestern and southeastern walls of the keep have decayed to create cavernous openings. According to local legend, the southeastern hole to the rear of the castle was created by the devil, and another more reasonable theory suggests it was created under the instruction of Oliver Cromwell to compromise the tactical advantage to the castle, but in reality it more than likely just weathered away. That being said, when the Lancashire Militia was ordered to be disbanded in 1649, they refused and for a time occupied the castle, protesting for unpaid wages, and that very same year Related or not, Parliament decided Clitheroe Castle needed to be slighted to prevent further use. It's unclear what was demolished to ensure this, if anything. Either way, it wasn't the end of Clitheroe Castle's story. In 1660, the honour of Clitheroe and the castle were granted as a reward to the first Duke of Albemarle, George Monk, by Charles II as a token of gratitude for aiding him in regaining the crown, and by the end of the 17th century the castle would become a residence of the honour, and would also function as something of an administrative centre for the region until the early 19th century. In the mid 19th century, the keep that stands before us today was under serious threat of collapse, but fortunately measures were taken to save it. After the First World War, fought between 1914 and 1918, you know, the big one just in case we were getting confused, in 1920, the local borough council purchased the site to create a memorial to the 260 soldiers from Clitheroe who died during the war, and now that monument stands proud in front of the castle. And finally, in 1950, Clitheroe Castle was granted the status of a Grade 1 listed building, meaning it is now considered a structure of exceptional interest. Today, Clitheroe Castle can be visited free of charge within opening hours, though the grounds will shut at 10pm or 30 minutes after sunset, whichever is earliest, or at least that's what I was told by a lovely sign. There is a museum on the site that does cost to enter, but it isn't too pricey, and all in all, it's definitely worth checking out if you happen to be in the area. But it was enjoyable to explore, even though it was freezing. With winter setting in, it is going to be harder to get on location as often, as plenty of sites are open for less hours and less days during the colder months. 
but the cold doesn't bother me much, so wherever we can, we will. Primarily for this video, I wanted to test out the new camera. Let me know how it looks down in the comments, of course. And also, be sure to give in-depth, detailed opinions on Aiden's RGB keyboard haircut. But on a serious note, props to him for being the day's designated driver. It allowed me to get some lovely shots on the way to and from Clitheroe. Purely for cinematic effect, of course, not because I was chimping around with the camera. But anyway, thank you all for watching this video, we hope you've enjoyed. Be sure to go ahead, leave a like, subscribe, share this channel with your friends if you're feeling kind, and be sure to shut the toilet lid before you flush, otherwise there may be poo particles on your toothbrush. Hopefully it won't be too long until our next adventure, but until next time, please do take care, and goodbye.